Hello everyone and welcome to this short tutorial. Uh, my name is Mas from TNO Dynam and today I'm going to talk about how you can model one uh, three-dimensional tunnel example with the uh, Y type of connection, how you can mesh it, set up the analysis, perform the construction stage and interpret the results in Dynam. So the whole process for this uh, tutorial is to import the geometry that I have already uh, made that, so you're familiar with the modeling process. And then I go through the other settings in terms of the assigning the mesh, extracting the elements for the lining, and so on and so forth. OK, so let's go through the modeling process. I'm going to import my geometry, which is already made. And uh, the format is DREP. Go to the folder, bring the tunnel geometry. It comes as a one compound, as a block. So the next step, if you want to make it workable geometry segment, is to explode the model. I go to the geometry, explode, and explode it to a series of sublevel shapes. For the first sublevel shape of the compound is uh, solids. So here you can see all the solid segments that are generated from this model. To make it more clear, I change the color of them, which is kind of automated. Now you can see all the solid segments in different uh, colors. You can change the level of transparency to see the inner part. Now you can see the tunnel in a type of white type of connection. The top train, the middle layer. And I'm going to reduce the change or reduce the tolerance for the transparency to the normal one. In this example, we, are, uh, we already have defined our material properties. More clone for the upper one, uh, another more clone for lower one, also more clone, and elastic type of property for the lining. So the next step here is to assigning solid mesh set for our inner part. So you go to for the selection of that, but um, I think the best way is to select or hide the upper one to make it more workable. So once again, I go to the auto mesh solid. You can change the element size. It, this is the really arbitrary; depends on your arrangement and how dense you want to define your model. I select the upper segments of the tunnel, which are located in the soft rock. So I change the name to the soft rock tunnel and the assigned property is soft rock. You can see the seeds. You can apply. It's a nicely patterned mesh. We select the same procedure, I mean, we do the same procedure, this time for the lower one. The same number of the element size, change the property to the hard rock, and the name of the mesh set to the hard rock tunnel. You can see the seeds. Done. So, the next step is to mesh the uh, ground. So it's always, when you want to define a mesh, start from the inner part and go for the outer part. So I select the upper one. The material type is soft rock. The element size is 20. You can see the element distribution. Click on Apply. I have mesh for the upper part. And here you can see every time that you go through the meshing process, there is a new mesh set generated under the mesh set. So for the lower ground or lower part, which is hard rock, I select the mesh set or say the geometry and change the name of the mesh set. And I have the corresponding mesh set under the other mesh set. So here you can see the soft rock tunnel segment one, two, and hard rock tunnel segment one and two and two main body for the uh, ground. You have the same display option at the mesh level, so you can do the transparency and see the inner part. Change the level of transparency to the solid view. I show only the tunnel segment. And this is mainly because I want to use or use them for extracting the elements. The easiest way is to somehow combine them or merge them, the 
upper one and the lower one, uh, you can merge them. And down the road, you can merge the whole tunnel. You can see. For extracting element, as I mentioned, um, it's better to merge uh, both uh, segments. So now we have one uniform uh, tunnel, although they are carrying different property. This is very important. So we go for extracting uh, elements. We select all the nodes, reference node. We select the corresponding mother elements. The type of property is aligning that we have already assigned. It's a curved shell. Click on apply. So this way, we extract the upper surface of these 3D elements, which they carry the same nodal con uh, compatibility and uh, connectivity with the solid element. Show only the lining part, and we're going to eliminate or delete the element parts that are not part of our interest. For instance, the bottom part and both ends. So I'm selecting both ends now. You can see them in a kind of 3D view. So this is our uh, lining or, say, it, the shell part of the model. So we have the mesh. We have the property. The next one is define load and boundary condition. For boundary condition, you go to the constraint, define boundary set, change your viewpoint to the one suitable one. Here I change it to the top. I select both uh, upper and lower nodes, all the face nodes, and constrain them in a Y global Y direction. I repeat the same procedure, but this time to the side uh, nodes. So I select all the surface nodes, which are located to both sides, constrain in the X direction, global X. change your view and we do or assign the vertical constraint in the Z direction to the, all the nodes located at the bottom. It's a very standard and typical type of constraint. You can see them in a 3D view. For loading, um, here we only consider the sulfate just for simplicity, the illustration, but you can consider any type of loadings. So we define gravity. So everything looks uh, okay. The next one is to set up the analysis. So it's a phase analysis. In the phase analysis, in the first stage, we're going to go through the initialization. That means we're going to select only the ground uh, parts or ground mesh sets. There is nothing about the lining. So the tunnel and two layers of the soil. These three will be our active mesh sets in the first phase. And in the second phase, we uh, kind of excavate the tunnel. So there won't be any tunnel mesh set. But instead, we're going to activate the lining. So you can see the soil layers, no tunnel, and only the lining will be added. So it's very fast solver, Dana. We perform nonlinear analysis, two-phase analysis. Quickly go through the analysis. We carry one of the fastest solvers among the uh, other finite element uh, solutions that are available goes through the process, done. So now we are going through the uh, result interpretation. So we import the results. We have two sets of results per construction state, so it's easy to import and you can save your time uh, if you want to deal with only one specific result. So for initialization, first let's look at the uh, vertical stresses. So you can see it's nicely layered in the vertical direction. And the res reset, we reset the displacement. So after initialization, all the uh, displacement are reset to zero. From second stage, when you excavate, this is the average displacement. You can see the inner part, the critical port, uh, point at the connection between two uh, main gallery and the connecting gallery. 
the vertical stress. These are normal stresses. If I show only the lining, now I can go to the 2D output and show the axial forces. There is very good and useful tool here in FX and that is you can change your uh, say reference coordinate system and then it gives you the correct or the uh, based on the selected reference coordinate system it automatically updates the results for you. So I have defined a new coordinate system along the main tunnel. I select that and in the output I'm gonna choose my output reference coordinate system to the element output coordinate system. So this is the results based on my specified or say the custom defined or customized coordinate system. Show all the mesh set. Change the output to the global 3D output. Perfect. So we have different uh, options. One is clipping view. In 3D case, you can cut the model. And in a real time, you can see the variation of the results as this cutting plane is moving. And you can cut the model at any angle, any rotation, uh, rotational position and any uh, angle. You can label the results at the critical point. And the same options and tools are available at the slicing level. So you can cut the model. This time the view and display will be 2D. But you can repeat the same procedure and cut the model and position this cutting plane at any uh, angle and any position. First you need to, for uncurved un diagram, you need to select one output. For any two optional points on the model, you can uh, select output, diagram output, in a form of diagram, or even you can specify a tabular format. You can see this is a diagram uh, view. And if you click on tab of table, you can see the variation of the results between those two arbitrary nodes in a tabular format. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It was short, but I tried to cover most of the functions and the workflow. Please feel free to share your comments. Uh, if you need any more information, if you need any more tutorial, you can always communicate with us, and I would be more than happy to address all your questions. Thank you very much, and have a good day.